My name is Tim Rhodes, and I was a clown. Now, for some of you, that feels a little bad. Your stomach starts to turn. You get a little anxious. You're not too sure. You think I'm odd, maybe even creepy. And for others, well, there's that effervescence. You start to get a little giggly and a little wonder at the magic, at the beauty, at the thrill of being a clown. And that was me when I was eight years old. I was thrilled and excited to be a clown. My family was given uh, by some strangers tickets to the circus. And so we loaded up and went to Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus, the greatest show on earth. And there we saw a tiger trainer and a woman who worked with polar bears and acrobats hanging from flaming rockets that swirled in the sky. And then one of my brothers had to pee. <laughs> and with four small boys, when one boy had to go, all boys had to go. So along with my father, we trooped off toward the bathroom. And as I went, the sights and the smells, the cotton candy and the popcorn and the people and the colors and the wonderment of it all, and I wandered away from my family. But I still looked and wondered at the whole of the circus. And then I looked behind some curtains and there were clowns, clowns, oodles of clowns, reading newspapers, playing cards, talking with one another, clowns. And then one of them spied me and came up and he squatted down in his big shoes and he clowned with me. For just an instant, he clowned with me and I was smitten. Right before me, opened Alice's hole into the Wonderland, opened the wardrobe into Narnia, opened the magic into the circus, and I could see there before me the essence of life, the whole of life opening before me. And from that instant on, all I ever wanted to be was a ringling clown. Ten years later, time to go to college. And so I applied to a college that was harder to get into than Harvard Medical School. And if you got in, and if you graduated, only 33% of the graduates actually got a job. The school was Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Clown College. And I got in. And not only did I get in, but I graduated, and not only did I graduate, I was among the 33%. I got a job as a clown on Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. It was my dream, and it was wonderful. We traveled the country on a train, and we went from city to city, and there I got to work with tiger trainers and watch Jewel New ride his motorcycle with a lion on the back of the motorcycle. And we traveled everywhere, and we got to do great things. And I got to clown and be in the clown belly. And every day, I got to dance with showgirls. It was absolutely wonderful. And I, I was now squatting down and mesmerizing those young children with the beauty of clowning. Then one day in Clown Alley, Another clown handed me a newspaper and said, you're going to want to read this. So I opened the paper, and my heart sank. In the paper was the story of John Wayne Gacy, who worked as Pogo the Clown. But John Wayne Gacy was a killer. Gacy killed 33 young men and boys, and it destroyed the world of clowning. Gacy became known as the killer clown, and now clowns went from being creepy to killer. And then came the movies, Poltergeist and the Creepy Clown, The Joker, 
in Batman. And uh, Stephen King's great novel, It, which was also made into a movie. And we as clowns just kept getting creepier and creepier and scarier and scarier. So what is it that makes clowns scary, creepy, a little bit weird? Well, first of all, they wear masks. We wear masks. And uh, so you can't really see our faces and you don't trust our emotions because we seem happy when we might actually be crying inside. So you don't trust the way we look and you don't trust the way that we feel. We're odd, similar to humans, but not the same. Yeah? And so my clown was my love, but my clown was also broken. Some 30 years later, I traded in my big red nose and bright red hair and baggy striped pants for pinstripe suits and power ties. I became a CEO of an international organization. Leadership all around the world, and it was another dream absolutely come true. But I found out something. People trust CEOs about as much as they trust clowns. (laughs) CEOs uh, wear masks and hide their emotions, and they're a little odd. They're similar to humans, but not the same. (laughs) But as a CEO, I learned to put my clown to work. I learned to put my clown to work. When I started as a CEO, I developed a problem, and I thought back to my clown and I put my clown to work to help me be a better CEO. You see, when I was in the circus, my job in the opening act was to wear a magnificent costume, spangles from head to toe in blue and green, a band outfit with a big band hat and a bright feather that swept into the sky. And my job was to carry a banner. I was one of four banner carriers. The first one said Ringling Brothers. The next one said Barnum and Bailey, Barnum, and that was me, Bailey, Circus, and so we would take our banners and march around the hippodrome track. And I would finish right at the center ring. And my job was to lean out and wave to the children and wave to the children. Well, right behind me were 16 Bengal tigers. Now, there was a cage, and when we think of cages, we think of steel bars, yes? No. This was mesh. And if the tigers jumped at me, they could grab me and devour all 135 pounds of me. And so there I stood with my banner and the tigers. And the one closest behind me was King. King was the biggest of the tigers, 460 pounds of orange and black death. King was so big that not only could you hear him breathe, you could feel him breathe. And if the tigers weren't enough, immediately around the track came the pachyderms, 18 of Ringling's largest elephants raced around and right inches in front of us and then raised up before us. And if only one of them fell, he would squash me into a clown pancake. (laughs) And my job was to stand there and hold a banner. (laughs) When I became a CEO, I worried. I worried about my workers and were they doing their jobs. We had partners in China, were they doing their job? Vietnam, Haiti, Florida, Missouri, Illinois, all around the world, were they doing their jobs? And I worried about them doing their jobs. But then I remembered King and the elephants and my banner, and I realized that if everybody in the circus did their job, if I held my banner and if King did his job and the elephants did their job, everyone would be safe and we would have a spectacular show. And if I did my job as CEO, if I filled my role and the people in China and Haiti and Florida and Missouri and Illinois did their jobs, we would have a safe company and 
we would have a spectacular company. You see, I took my clown out and put him to work, and I learned from my clown. Yeah? You worry about a lot of things when you're a CEO, and people think a lot about you and of you. And there's a temptation when you're a leader that your ego will get in your way, that you will start believing that people are laughing at your jokes because they're funny, but they're not. They're just being polite. And when your ego gets out of control, it gets you in trouble. When I was in the circus, my favorite costume was that of a dervish. And this, this costume is deeply insulting to Islam. It's the circus. And the costume was beautiful. It was based on the dervishes who are Sufi Muslims. And Sufi Muslims are deeply dedicated to love and to service and to mastering their egos. To mastery of their egos. And mastery of the ego is, is, is something that most major religions, Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Muslimism, really preaches and practices. And that was one of the beauties of the Muslims who were known as Sufis and dervishes. Now, the, the magnificent thing about dervishes is that they whirled, whirling dervishes. And as they spun and spun and spun, they would put themselves into a trance and would reach a higher spiritual plane. And as they spun, their long, beautiful robes would fly up as they spun. And that was our costume. It had a skirt that when I spun, it flew up. That's what made it so much fun. But this costume was beautiful gold and purple. I had high purple boots and lovely purple pants and a spangled coat, sequins all the way down. This coat was, had so much handwork done in it that it was valued at $6,000. The one coat. And then this whole thing was topped with a cone hat, that purple, that went up and glittered, and it had three little feathers on top. And I wore this costume, and I would spin, and I would spin, and I would spin, and my coat would fly up. And it was so much fun. And then one day, I was spinning and spinning and spinning, and I got dizzy, and I spun out of control, and I slipped on a giant puddle of elephant pee. <laughs> and when I slipped, I fell. And I whacked my head right there in all of that elephant pee. And the next thing I knew, another clown came up to me and said, we got to get out of here. And he pulled me up and we raced off just as the elephants came thundering through. <laughs> Whenever my ego starts to spin out of control, I remember that in front of tens of thousands of people in a long beautiful $6,000 coat with a cone hat with three little feathers sticking out, I lay in a puddle of elephant pee. And you can get your clown out and remember that too. When you start to spin your ego out of control, just remember that you're a short stumble away from laying in a puddle of your own foolishness. And whenever you start wanting to do everybody else's job, and whenever you don't think that the world is oriented your way, remember that your job is to hold that banner between tigers and elephants. And nothing focuses the mind like roaring tigers and bounding elephants. And remember to work your clown, to remember that you're a little bit odd, a little bit different, similar to humans, but not the same. And when you take that clown out and work your clown, you participate in the effervescent magic of life. Thank you.